The World Series is on the air. This is Naven Field, Detroit. The well, the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals are battling for the World Championship. The play-by-play descriptions of all the World Series games are brought to you with a compliment of the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer, producers and distributors of Ford and Lincoln cars and Ford trucks. The sponsors will be amply repaid. You get enjoyment from these broadcasts. At this time, during the preceding six games, we've had the pleasure of presenting Graham McNamee, who has, in his own vivid style, pictured the World Series color, excitement, and the crowd. Unfortunately, Graham had to return to New York last night, and I know he misses being here today. He's listening, we know. Here's the beginning of this seventh and deciding game of the 1934 World Series. We miss him, as we know you do. Now for the attending pregame tenseness and excitement of today, we turn you over to Don Wilson of New York. He'll give you the picture here, and Tom Manning will decide the first four and a half innings while we have the pleasure during the last half of the game. All right, Don Wilson, got my idea to help yourself with this microphone. Thank you, Ford Barn. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hardly need to tell you that uh, there is a capacity crowd gathered here in the stands at Nathan Field in Detroit, Michigan this afternoon to witness the seventh and final game of the 1934 World Series between the Cardinals of St. Louis and the Tigers of Detroit. The capacity crowd keeps to the highest pitch for this crucial battle. Not only are the spectators in an almost state of frenzy, but the players themselves are very much on edge with their nerves being very taut a condition which might easily be fanned into a flame because of the strain of such an exciting series, as you already know. You will recall that this is the first time since 1931 that the World Series has gone to seven games when the St. Louis Cards fought it out with Connie Mack Athletics. Experts have said that this series would depend largely upon the effectiveness of the pitchers, which is quite an obvious fact in the short series. And that prediction has held true with the great team, Izzy and Daffy, Blue Boy Raw and Tommy Zwitsky. So far, Daffy Dean is the only pitcher to go through unscathed. Raw, Bridges, Dizzy Dean, each having won one and lost one game, while Daffy has won both his starts. It was right here in Detroit that this whole World Series this year opened, and that first game was conspicuous for two particular reasons. The blowing up of the Tiger infield, which may be accredited to over-anxiety, and uh, the pitching of Jizzy D, the Stars winning 8-3 to three in that first game. Then the second game came along, and it was marked by the outstanding pitching performance of schoolboy Rowe for Detroit. He turned in an all-time standout accomplishment of retiring 22 men in a row. Then the scene of the battle changed down to Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. Oh, Daffy D was in the box for the car. Lacking his usual control, Daffy frequently was trailing the batter who had this youngest of the Dean brothers uh, up three to two. As a result, Paul had the bases populated most every inning during that game, but due to the fine support and teamwork of the entire final squad and some mighty crafty change clips on Daffy's part, the Tarts came through to win four to one. Then came the fourth game of this series, and the Tigers' claws were sharpened to needle point. Detroit's batting strength, overpowering St. Louis, was Detroit winning to the tune of 10 to 4. But this game gave us the finest pitching of this series to date, a most enviable record being turned in by Tommy Bridges of the Detroit Tigers, who pitched the sharpest breaking ball that he has ever had, and who would have had a shutout to his credit, but for one missed Delancey. The stalwart card catcher who pulled along one out for a homer, scoring the only run for St. Louis. The Tigers winning three to one. That brings us down to yesterday's game here in Detroit, which was one of those good old fashioned ball games as we listened to it. Starring honors going to one Leo DeRocher, card shortstop, golf admittedly rather poor hitter. He knocked the old apple all over the lot, getting three hits out of four times at bat. Drew Joplin also gets a hand for his spectacular catch with his back against the fence of Delancey set for an extra base hit. Start winning, as you well know, yesterday, 4-3, and what a ball game that was. This brings us down to the task at hand, the present task, this seventh and deciding game for the World Championship. 
And don't you for one minute think that those men down there won't all be giving everything that they have this afternoon, not only for the honor of winning the gold rag, emblematic of the world's baseball champion, but for the $1,800 at stake, which is the difference between $5,700 and $3,900 as the players care for the winners. You know, I've been sitting at home in New York listening to Ford Vaughn and Tom Manning give us their very splendid reports on these games and listening to Mac, as we so affectionately call Graham McAmey, giving us this pregame color and his very pertinent remarks throughout the game. I've been sitting at home in New York listening to these reports just as you have. And as I was flying through the air by plane between here and New York last night, it occurred to me that I'd like to know just a little bit more about these players whose names have become almost household words during this series. So thinking that perhaps uh, many of you listening in in our radio audience might be interested in the same thing, I dug down into the voluminous biographical file and have here some highly informative data which I think perhaps many of our radio audience will be interested in. Before we give that to you, just a few moments before we took the air, there was a huge floral horseshoe taken in here and placed just to the left of the batter's box here at Haven Field for this World Series. It was uh, brought in by Tommy Richardson, Mickey Cochran's straight man, and Captain O'Toole, actually known as probably the noisiest baseball leader in America. This huge floral tribute will be presented to Mickey Cochran, manager of the Detroit Tigers. The final thing of this is today. Let's, let's look down and see what happens and some of the facts pertaining to some of their players. Find John Pepper Martin, the third baseman, and incidentally, Pepper, as you probably already are cognizant about, head for the batting baseman, or the St. Louis National. Pepper Martin, the wild horse of the old stage and the outstanding hero of the 1931 World Series. He's the Cardinals' regular third baseman instead of center fielder as he was in the 1931 series. Martin's improved his play around the hot corner so much that he is considered by many as one of the fastest fielding third basemen in the National League. He's like a cat on punch down the third baseline and possesses an arm of field. There's no doubt about his batting and base running. He ranks among the best ball players in the Heidler circuit. 1934 record shows that he's bat 289, fielding 942. That's Martin heading the batting list for the card. Then comes right fielder John Hoffman. John Rothrock has been batting around the majors for the past five or six years. Most of the time he spent trying to make good with the Boston Red Sox. An injury to his leg while running the patients hampered his work, and he never until now reached Florida. We met him down at the hotel this morning, and he is a fine specimen of athletic fitness. Rothrock was used in most other positions of the stock, but did not cast a pitch. He was sent to Columbus in the American Association, a farm team of the Cardinal chain. And they played such stellar ball that the Cardinal management decided to give him another chance. He played a fine game for the Cards this season and he come through with many a timely goal. Jack is a finished fielder and his throwing arm is one of the very best. He's also very, very fast on the base. He's one of the few Cardinal players who have not started in their game store and worked himself up into the major league team. This is his first camp in the World Series and he has shown the temperament and ability to do great things. 1934 record, batting 284, fielding 978. Then we come to Mikey Freight, second baseman and playing manager for the St. Louis Cardinals. Mikey was made manager of the St. Louis Cardinals and said that he would instill in the broad system of playing ball in the Cardinals' team of things. So far, he's carried it out to the letter. First, you know, he was a member of the Giants for eight years, and in that time, he had solved all of McGraw's methods. He has his teammates on the toes and insists that they take an extra base every time there's a possibility of making it. Mike is a great believer in hit and run play, which made McGraw one of the most feared managers in baseball. The Fordham Flash may not be as colorful as the old time manager was, but he's very, very close to it. Flash is one of the greatest money players ever to take part in the World Series. His ability for making seemingly impossible plays and uh, playing bang up ball when the going is the toughest seems to be one of Mikey's main points. Matt suffered in all his long play since he took over the managership of the St. Louis team. 1934 record, batting 306, fielding 971. Then we have at left field, Joel Ducky Wucky 
Medwick. Ducky working legged, he's plugging on and Gary, but the Cardinals is one of the hardest hitters in the National League. He gave Pilot after his first season in the majors in 1933 of being a coming side. He remained among the first five batters most of the season, but his club dropped him from that select circle. Medwick is one of the leading extra base hitters of the National League and one of its leading run scorers and batter in of run. He has a great throwing arm and covers a lot of territory in that old left field garden out there. Hendricks has never failed to hit below the 300 mark in all the six years that he's been playing in the minor major league baseball. He makes his home in New Jersey and first began playing center pro ball on that section. The Cardinals picked him up and uh, played with them with their time in 1930. Let's listen to the star final battle. Afternoon is three of nothing. 
Hank Greenberg takes a few steps over toward the pitcher, yelling words of encouragement. Walker taking his time, and now the windup. Ball three. The strike ball. A pointing fast ball. Right down the alley. So high. Harry Dazzle behind the back. Here's the first. Owens is second. And Slum umpiring his third. The pitch is being one. The strike. Three two. Yes, sir, the fans have really touched up this afternoon. There is a capacity crowd here. The sun is shining brightly. There's a wind blowing in from the right field this afternoon. Three and two is the count. And here it is. John Pepper Oh, that was pitching. Yes, sir, that was pitching. This old ball game with everybody turns on it. Elvin Walker, just as cool as an iceberg. Gets the count three and nothing on the first hitter, Pepper Martin. He then sucks three of them right down the alley, and finally with a count three and two, Pepper Martin swung and this one gone, nobody on. Flat rock up. The pitch. It's a strike. Oh. Elder Walker has plenty on that one. Here's the wind up again. It's a drive in the center field, a base hit. Fight is going over the ball. He's hit into the center field. Rothrock is down in first. The throw, Rothrock is second. It's a double. Jack Rothrock nailed that ball. A sporting line drive. Into left center field with Joshua Height going back fast. He knocked the ball down. And before he could pick it up and get it back to the infield, Rothrock was on second base. A two-bagger for Rothrock and manager Frankie Frick is coming up. Umpire Harry Geisel delayed proceeding for a moment to brush off the dish. Harry Geisel, you know, the players are all very much satisfied with the, the ball and strike decisions of all of these umpires. Here we go now, ready to go on quick. One down, one on second. Ball one, a hook ball, umpire, and outside. It's the first inning, Black Rock on second. The pitch, the high fly ball. Out of the short center field, Rogel going back, White coming in. Rogel has it. Two out. Well, Brock on second. Frankie Creek swung at that ball. It was a high pitch inside, hitting the ball on the handle of his back. And Jojo White, Billy Rogel, were off for the crack of the bat. Rogel turning around and making the neat catch for out number two. Joe Medwick. Joey Medwick, the Cardinal left fielder, is up. A right hand hitter. There's the stretch. Another pitch. It's a ball. A fastball is inside. Pedrick pulls away from the plate. First inning in all. Cardinals batting two out. Jack Blackrock on second. The result of a double. Ball one on Joey Medrick, the hitter. The pitch. The high infield fly ball. Going back to third base with Owen going back fast. He has it. And that's all for the St. Louis Cardinals in the first inning. Go one, one hit, and go out. Ford Bond. These World Series broadcasts are brought to you through the courtesy of the makers of the Ford V8. And here in the Cardinals half of the first inning, Martin came up. The count went to three and two, and then he went down swinging hard. He had a strikeout route and hit that long, long left back to the bank. Jack Rothrock followed him in the batting order, banged one out into left center field for a two base hit. He rested happily down on second as Frankie first came to bat. A high fly to short left center. Rogel went back on the grass under it and had it in the pocket for the second out. Two out, one on, and Medwick up. Medwick fouled one, high behind third. Bowen went out fast under it and took that one in the net. No run, one hit, no error. And the big zero hangs in the first half of the first inning for St. Louis on the scoreboard out in right field. Here's Dean is taking his face out of the mound. He's warming up with Delancey. And Jojo White is down there swinging two big black bats as he comes into the batter's box. And here's Tom Manning. You know, there's a little picture down there that we want you to get. Here's he's Dean, you know, is in the box this afternoon. With the expected pitcher. Frankie Chris said before the game that well, if his wants to go, we're going to put him in there. Perhaps he thinks that Dizzy Dean is very much in trouble winning the title and he's getting the chance to pitch base. Ready to go. White is up. 
That's what happens to these Mississippi teams with only a day's left. They're getting there this afternoon instead of Wild Bill Hallahan. Jojo White is up. All one. Strike foul. All one. And strike one. Jojo White, a left hand hitter. Center fielder and leadoff man of the Falcons. The wind up. One and one. Strike call. Ball to both over the outside corner to a left hand hitter, and it is now a strike two and ball one. Wind up the pitch. It's a ball. Now the Frankie Stacy comes over. He has it. Throws the column. White is out at first. One side are down in the first inning. That was a foul ball. The Frankie Stacy came over to his butt. It's it up. Mickey Parker gets a hand. Hits him. Manager Mike Cochran. There was a lot of doubt here in Detroit last night as to whether or not Manager Mike would be able to play today. He was spiked in running out of hit yesterday when Paul Dean put backs against his face. It was a bad gas, and he was in the hospital all night. But he's out here this afternoon helping the boys in this crucial World Series ball game. First inning, one out. Cochran up the pitch. The strike called. Nice fast ball is right down the old alley. Mickey Cochran up with one out and nobody on. Drive off the left field with a foul. Ball curve foul and the foul on Cochran is strike two. Mike Cochran is up and Gellinger will be next. Jerome Dizzy G. Strike two, the wind up. Coming. It's a ground ball down second. Sink comes up with it. Throws to column. Hoffman is out. Two out. Nobody on. Gellinger coming up. Gellinger is getting a nice ground for the ball. Now that Gellinger, you know, living up to his reputation of the past. Quiet ball. Just in there playing his best all the time, and his best is good enough. Two out, nobody on the pitch to Gellinger. The high fly ball out toward left field. It is curving forward, everybody out there. Nobody gets it. Ooh, Joey Hendrick was almost injured that time. He came over fast, and his side bumped into the concrete barrier. And some of the boxes out there back of third base. He ran all the way to the gutter. He didn't fall down, and Galway going back out to left field. Dolly Gellinger was taking no catch on that ball. He was on the second base and was on his way to third. The pick. The fly is into the right field. That box is going over near the line, under it, and he has it. That's all for the Tigers in the first inning. No run, no hit, no errors. No run to Jets. Well, Jets their reads on Manning. No runs and yes. Two of those heroes now hang out on that right field scoreboard. St. Louis, nothing. Detroit, nothing. And we end the first inning of this important ball game. Important, yes, sir, the seventh and deciding game of the 1934 World Series. The East Indian battling the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals tied up a three games each. And here's what happened to the Tigers out of the first. Wright came up, found it to break, and he was out first to pilot. Back when it's back, down to one hop, down to the Frankie Bridge, who it, winged it over to first base to Rick Fallon, retiring faster. Right in Fallon down, and Geringer up. Geringer finally had to bang that fly out over first base and curving foul. Drove a fly out into right field, and Glassbox took it well to third out. No run, no hit, no error. Now we have the fifth man in the Cardinal batter coming up. Coming to the plate here in the second inning, and Tom Manning to give it to you. All right, Tom. It's Rip Crown, the Cardinal first tackle, left hand batter. Held the marker. Right hand submariner is in the box. The wind up, the pitch. He swings and it's a drive out in the left center field. It's a face hit. Collins bounds first. White right has the ball. Puts it into Rope Garrett. It gets past Rope Garrett. Garrett are backing up. It covers the ball, and Collins stops at first. A single. Fine drive out to Jojo. Right, but he took on the bounce. 
got away from Will Gerrill on the return, but Geringer was backing up. That's the second crab will hit. Bill Delancey, the catcher, is up. The pitch. Ball running. A fast ball is back into Tuckman's glove. Bill Delancey pulling away from the plate, and it is ball one. First pass of the second inning. A foul back, strike. Ball one, strike one. Ball one, strike one, the strike. A peek over to first, the pitch. It's a ball. Outside, and the count on Bill Delancey. Left hand hitter is two and one. Elder Raptors. Having a hard time out there in the tipping rubber, trying to get that extra third out of the way. Now he goes up to go. Ball two and strike one. The pitch. It's a bowling ball down third. And he's carrying it. And here's that play again with Collins on first. Bill Delancey left the ground ball to move Owen. Owen. To Geringer, Collins was out. Geringer to Greenberg, getting the hitters to Lancey. Two out, nobody on. That's Daddy up. Put the first pitch coming right up here to the golf oh, oh, somebody caught it. Well, that's the closest we come to being hit so far. Ball strike one. Something about these microphones, they should not be hit by a ball there. Strike one of the count, half a pitch. There's a base hit in the right field. The ball is exceeded by Pete Fox, returns to Los Gallo at second, or Daddy, Fox the first, the second part of the hit of the inning, the third of the afternoon. Leo DeLosa, the star of yesterday's ball game. Brilliant short stack yesterday at Old Hill, and three bases all to close the outfield. Or Daddy out first to hold the rest of the pitch, six, two. The Locher, back to right handed. There's the stick. A peek at first. Coming. There he goes. The play is at second base. He is out stealing. Eric Sotty is out stealing. Hopkins. Two carrier. Oh, no. Two hits. And four errors. In the first half of the second inning. Forward. Collins, the first side will batter up in the cards after the second. That point in the center field over second base or a clean single. Delancey, Bill Delancey, fancy catcher of the St. Louis Cardinals, bounded one down to Marvorn, or took it stopped over to second where Geringer had it, winging it down to Greenberg for a double play, play wiping up the bases, two out, and Orsatti coming to the back. Orsatti grounded one in the right field for a single. He was on in Leo DeRosa, who came up yesterday, got three out of four, and was up there swinging that bat hard. And Orsatti went started down to second and was out on the block down there from Mickey Cochran's wing, retiring the side. No run, two hits, and no errors. Now we come to the fourth batter in the Detroit Tigers lineup as they come up for their half a second. It's the Goose, Goose Goslin, stepping up to the plate now. And here's Tom Manning coming in to give it to you. All right, Tom. Dizzy Dean is on there kicking some more of that dirt around the pitching rubber. As he prepared to go into the Tiger half of the second inning. No runs is just a wind-up, downfield hitting. First ball is a slow hopper down first base. Collins takes it, tosses to Dean. He's out. Collins takes the ball, and Dean, Dizzy Dean, cover the bag, taking the throw, and getting the foot out. One goal. That was a lazy, bombing ball. That's just Collins handed. Next hitter will be Philly Rogel. Little... Short stop of the Detroit Tigers. Billy is batting left hand of the afternoon against the right hand slant of Dizzy Dean. Here's the wind up. One gone, nobody on. Long one this time. Here comes. As a bounding ball down, short to Rosa is in fast. It's him. He's safe. How about the bounding ball that the Rosa came in fast for? Beautiful in the dirt. Collins knocks it down, and it is scored as an error for a shortstop to Rocher. Rocher face at first, on to Rocher's error. Greenberg batting. 
Big white hand hitter. Last time of the second inning, one out. And Rogel is on first. There's the stretch. And the pitch. Strike. Ball. That was a hook ball. It tips the outside corner of the plate. To Hank Greenberg. Greenberg has his jaw set down there. The draft of him swinging that bat up and down. There's the stretch. And the pitch. Strike. He swings hard and misses. And now it's two and nothing. Hank Greenberg is hitting third baseman, Flurbo, and his next. Rochelle is on first, one man out. Dean is pumping his left foot up and down out there on the rubber. Where's the stretch now? A peak at first, and the pitch. A foul is back. And the crowd remains strike two. Up and cross out a new ball, fire hurry, guys will build the last he went. Seven yards out where the pitcher's pop. And then crosses it to Dizzy. Dizzy takes his blood off and first puts out towards center field. And now he's looking in at Hank Greenberg. Standing out there, rubbing the ball in his bare hands. Now he's ready to go the stretch. It's strike two, you know. A play at first. Well, Carroll is safe. Dizzy turns, stopped that ball over there with plenty on it to Rick Dollars. Another stretch. The pitch. Strike three! He swung hard. Had a curve ball over the outside corner. It was just above the knees and missed it for a third strike. Two men out. Both got on first. And Bob on. Detroit Tiger, third baseman. Right hand hitter is up. No runs he's yet, you know. That is a stretch. The pitch. The bounding ball down a couple of marks. Martin comes up with it, throws to first, forcing Rochelle at second for the third out. No run, no hit, one error, third bomb. The Ford Motor Company is sending you to broadcast the World Series game. The National Broadcasting Company presents a special news bulletin from the Black Radio Bureau. My five friends. Frank Farm Minister Louis Basu died today from bullet wounds inflicted by an assassin who also killed King Alexander I of Yugoslavia. It was first reported that Basu's injuries were not serious. And first, the French cabinet has been hurriedly called into meeting to take action on the assassination of King Alexander of Yugoslavia. A grave European crisis is feared. Sound Prince Peter, 11 years old, the son of the plain king, probably will be proclaimed king within a few days. These bulletins have been a press radio bureau. For further details, read your newspaper. Here we are now, going into the first half of the third inning. Out on the mound, Elvin Alter is warming up with Mickey Cochran. We have Leo DeRocher coming up there, who was at bat when Orsatti was out of second on a field. Here's Tom Manning to give you the first half of the third inning. All right, Tom. Here are the old field, all the final shortstop. With the last last inning, when Orsatti was erased feeling. Well, the walker, right-hander, starts to wind up on the first pitch to DeRocher. A great ball. There's the wind-up again. Ball on, a fast ball is high inside. And the count on DeRocher is one and one. Ball two. Hawker's third ball was low and 20 outside. Two and one. All two and strike one. Hawker walks out of the pot for a second dose. Now he's in there again. The windup. Strike call. That was a third ball. And over the heart of the plate. And now the count on DeRosa is two and two. All two and strike two. That's a drive out of the center field. Place going over a little bit under it. Waiting. He has it. One man out. Leo Delosha, the Cardinal shortstop, fires to Jojo White. The pad is for Dizzy Dean.
Delone, Dippy, Dean, the Papago, starting. One off, nobody on. Coming. The ball open back. Dippy Dean, better back right out of his hands. And a ball clear down past the third base, push it. Swung at that ball and fouled it off. Now the coach is bringing it back. Dippy walked halfway down to get it. Taking his pitching hand that time. With the bat strapped out of his hand and probably stung for a moment. Dippy gets a big hand full of dirt, rubbing that old crowd around there plenty. But you could say he's got a real grip on it. Boy, another ball back, right two. The big boy is taking a lazy swing at that ball. That time he reached over the outside corner for a bad kick. Got swung rather leisurely out. And the count is two of nothing. Here's the windup. Right two on Dizzy Dean. Back one out of the left field. It's like a face hit. It is a face hit. The Dean is rounding first. Dazzle hands the ball. Dean is going down. It's going to be close. Close, close. He ties in. He's safe. A double for Dizzy Dean. Going up to 20, close to second base. But Dazzle returns to Rochelle. Or just a little bit on the pitching box side of the bag. And Dizzy Dean put on the other side with a right hook slide. And he is safe getting a two base hit. With a long, close swing at that ball, got cut it right and tucked it out to left field for two base. Pepper Martin coming up. Last time up, Pepper struck out. That is a stretch and the pitch. He rocks one out to left, starting foul. It is foul. Strike one. Boy, there's two on five. Bill Cram and Harry Geisel were certainly out there in position to see that one. I think guys are running about 15 feet down for it, sir. He's got a good view of that line. Right one on top of one. There's the flex and the quick. All one of the back ball inside, and the cloud is ball on the first one. Greenberg is playing back. So is Owen. They're not expecting it. The fuck? Ball on the first one. Ball two, the third ball is outside. Gonna control what this couple marks is going to do, you know. One bad out, and Jimmy Dean is on second. And the bounding ball down first, Greenberry has it. Hawker covering. He's safe. That's safe, safe. Hawker coming over his trailer, and it's couple marks. He's in the bottom of There's a bit of an argument going on down there at first base with going a. As his hat off, standing there, going, you know, selling him the argument. He probably said, look like we had him. But Hawker and Greenberg are talking to Dean Good. But Pepper Martin picks it out. That will be scored as a base hit. That puts Dizzy Dean on third base. Now we have one of them, first and third. No runs on his head. One man out. And Jack Wilcox, the cargo right fielder, left hand batter coming up. The Tigers are going to play back, hoping to get a double play. Carrying a little scale of first playing deep. There's a trick. On his own first and third runner. Left rock hitting. The trip. Pass is going down the throw from the church. Kick away from Jerry Neal back team. The whole third base. After Scarlet base to Pepper Martin. Mike Kaplan scroll landed about 10 feet in front of Jerry Neal. Jerry Neal stuck up his left hand and batted the ball 15 or 20 feet away. But you can see the pitcher held fast to third base. Scroll down for Scarlet base for Pepper Martin. Third run on left left. Cracker has his glove out now, is looking around the pitcher's back momentarily. This is a tough spot in this important trial game. Runners on second and third. Here's the line up. The pitch to left left. Ball two of third foul. Left left. Steps into that one. Gonna have to play away fast. He's all those hooks. Sizer comes out and brushes off the plate. So we're delayed for a moment. Left left is out of the batter's back. Now he's in there ready to go. The crowd is fouled too. 
the first ball screen. So far inside, it's three or nothing. Mike is free. We'll be up next. Here it comes. Final throw. He left. The faces are loaded. Do not believe that that was an intentional pass to Jack Laplock. Parker was bearing down just a little bit too much. The play for half turn, not to give Laplock anything good, and for the runner, there will be a chance for a double play from each state. Frankie switches up. The infield is still playing back, hoping for a double play. Run out the bags loaded. The pitch. A foul up and back. Strike. Our manager is Frankie. There's a picture, you know, Gene is on third base, Pepper Martin on second, Jack Wellcroft is on first. First half of the third inning, no run, scored as yet, and come out. Here's the lineup, strike one. Well, a fast ball is inside. Frankie Fritz pulling away and then leading back on his back. Count is very one and strike one. There's the lineup, a long one, far one, strike one. The power foul up and back into the stands, and it's strike two. The roar that you heard, one of the ball fans popped up there, and has the World Series souvenir. Strike two and far one. Drop by a guy with a soft out of new ball. Hacker is out there with his glove off, and he's rolling on his hands. Now he's in there, ready to go. Strike two, ball one, five floaters, one out. The lineup, coming. It's a ball. Outside. With a count two and one, after had one to wait, he tried it third ball, low outside, and now it's two and two. Ball two and strike two. Here's the lineup. Two and two. It's a ball to right field, it's moving down. Everybody running. Rock Rock is around the third base. The ball landed about three or four yards outside the foul line. And the count on Frankie Fritz remains 2-2. Rock Rock was coming back to first rather slowly. He was on third. Couple back on second. Rock Rock on first. One out, two and two on the hitter. Walker's getting the signal now. And here's that long wind up. Two and two, the pitch. Down first. 
putting team down third. Pepper Martin stole second. Jack Walcott took a base on ball, filling the bag. Frankie Fritz then doubles to right field, stirring the bases and making it the Cardinals three, the Tigers nothing. This is the seventh, you know, seventh and final game of the World Series. The boys have battled tooth and nail during the past six days. Two games here at Maven Field, the next three over at Portsmouth Park in St. Louis, and they returned here yesterday. The Cardinals won, forcing the seventh game, and here it is. Here in the first half of the third inning. Ready to go again, and Joe Medwick, the left fielder of the Cardinals, will be first to face through ball low. There's the set. And the pitch, a bounding ball down to Rogel, Rogel to Greenberg, and Medwick is out. Fritz going to third on the play. Unnecessary, Frankie Fritz still in the third base, taking no chances of being put out. Now we have two men out, and Ripper Collins, the first backer of the Cardinals, left hand battle is up. Ripper Collins. It's the first ball, quick to face it in the left field. Fritz scores from third. Michael fumbles a moment, picks it up, puts it into Rochelle, and Collins drops it first. The Cardinals four, Tigers nothing. Bill Delancey, the Cardinal catcher, will be the next hitter. The score, the St. Louis Cardinals fall before Tigers nothing. Four run rally by the Cardinals in this, the first half of the third inning. There's the stick. The pitch. It's a ball high inside. One or nothing. On Bill Delancey. School boy will take the stick. A peak at first. And now the delivery. It's a ball inside. The start breaking for a ball at Bill Delancey. Gets out of the wall, and the car is two and nothing. Right to stop the gun. The last two batting of the car is very soon. It is present back out in the right field. Going, going. Out in the right field. They hit the ball. Coming back to the car. Coming to the ground. He says, keeping right on going. Here's the car. He's got the plate. And he's got the car. And he's got the car. And he's got the car. Now for the second. And that's the whole double. Bill Delancey, the Cardinal catcher, took that ball, and it's coming across the letter, and he nailed it to the right field corner for two bases. It is now the St. Louis Cardinals, five, the Cardinals, seven. Bill Delancey, now over the Cardinals, dugout. Here's two for the afternoon. We please, the ball step will be the next pitcher that is not official as yet, and we'll see until he starts to the left foul. Two pass steps, left hand pitcher is doing the name as the official replacement in the box for the fight. The next hitter, the ninth hitter at the inning, by the way, will be Ernie Orsani, the little center fielder. The umpire, Harry Johnson, umpire in chief behind the plate, is called Fayball, now we're about ready to go. Pass steps, you know, is the left hand pitcher. Might be on second of the pitch. It's a ball. A hook ball break inside for Ernie Orsani. And the crowd is one of nothing. Orsani being the main hitter of the inning. Ball two, a back ball that knocks Orsani down. Picks himself up rather slowly, dusting himself off. And the count is ball two. As that long, slow cut. And the fifth, straight ball. The top two or nothing. Now the marker for the fast ball right down the alley for a ball strike. Ball two and strike one. Now the set. It's a high foul over back of third. Owen going over fast. He doesn't catch up with it. And the count is two and two on any or study. Guys will roll the new ball out there to Hostet. And then dust the plate off. Bob Owen is getting back to position towards shortstop O'Kell with Bill Delancey returning to second base. First half of the third inning, two men out. 
and the count is called two strike two. There's the set and the pitch. Ball three. The sweep is third ball is outside. A mere wire pitch with Nachman going outside to get it. Nigel takes one look at it and crosses over to the Tiger dugout. Three and two, the pitch. Ball four. And Scotty left. Neil DeRosa, the Cardinal shortstop, coming up for the second five in this inning. He opened this inning with a long fly ball in center field for the first out. Neil DeRosa, right hand hitter is up. There's the set. There's the base hit in the right field. Delancey, Bobby Stokes, the first pitch, 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 Bill Delancey had gone to third base, but the coach over there held him up. And all we have the bases loaded to us. And we be seeing something else. Here's something funny. Every one of the Cardinals has reached base at least yet in this inning. Except Joe Beckwith. Busy team comes out to, comes off the bench rather slowly. It's a pretty stiff breeze, Glenn. Just a little bit chilly here this afternoon. He took some time getting his jersey off. Back to one to about two hours. Dizzy Dean is up. The pitch strikes down. Delancey is on third. Outside on second. Delancey on first. Here's the pitch. And the high bounding ball down third on is in fast. Picks it up and is unable to make the play. It's a big hit. Delancey crosses the plate and Jimmy Dean hits base at first. He pulled it high at that ball, snapped it to hit the edge of home plate and fouled to the box. The sweater is cutting five feet in the air. Jimmy Dean, you know, is running fast. Third on came in fast and saw that there was no chance of getting Delancey at the plate and no chance of getting Dean at first because that's hung on the ball. That's the second hit of the inning for Dizzy Dean. The third over the Cardinals, six, five, seven. Bases is still loaded, two out, and John Pepper Martin. Cardinal third baseman will be next. It's the way the moment where Dizzy Dean gets that great Cardinal red sweater on. Last time up, Pepper Martin, single. In the first inning, he struck out. He backs up. Left hand is in the back. Dizzy Dean has it. Get around all ready to go. The pitch. Ball on. Fast ball is inside. Pepper Martin pulls away. Count is one another. Here's the pitch. Ball two. Fast ball is over, but just a little bit low. Now the count on Pepper Martin is two and nothing. He's the first Cardinal battle of the inning. Ball three. Another low one outside. Three of nothing. Ball three. The guy's floated. Here's the pitch. Ball four. He walks. That forces and he's got it across the plate. The Cardinal. Seven, the Tigers seven. Mickey Chappell has left off to the pitcher's box again, and the running across the top there with the Hall Center. Chappell on the shoulder, Hall Center is slowly walking out of the box over towards the Tiger bench, which is on the third base side of Naval Field. Many of the old time baseball celebrities are here. The World Series this year, and it's really good to see them all. Outstanding among them, Wally Jones, is the one and only Dave Ruth. We're going to give you a few of these facts now because the next kind of pictures that won't start as yet. And apparently now it'll be some moments before he does. Dave Ruth, you know, is sitting here in the press box. Word is going out to the newspaper to Dave Ruth. Will not sign a contract to play ball next year, but he will sign a contract to manage one of the clubs. We believe that Tommy Bridges 
is coming in to be the next pitcher. So many old, so many of pitchers, the one with some of the umpires. Dick Callum was looking at the Junior World Series this year. Also, is here to witness two of the fine ball games. Boy Van Kaplan, formerly of the American League, also around the corner. This teacher, that's the greatest center fielder of all time is here. Eddie Cohen, there's another name that comes away. Not, not flies away of the Indians. Over the season, Matt and Eddie Collins and all. The experts will tell you that they were two great second classes. Eddie Collins is here perhaps trying to buy some outstanding ball players for Tom Rocky of the Boston Red Sox. Tommy Bridges took that great game for the Tigers. will take up the pitching now for the Detroit Tigers. The Orphan Stone, Gold came in, and Keith Hallstead, and now Tommy Bridges. Jack Rothrock will be up. The base is loaded, two men out. Seven runs the catch the base for the Cardinals. Bridges starts his wind up on the pitch to Rothrock, the left hand hitter. Ball runs. Back there is inside. Two men out in the third inning. Base is loaded to all. And here's the windup. Here's the bouncing ball. Kelly comes up with a package to Rochelle. That's all on the Cardinals in the first half of the third inning. Good, where have you been? I've been right here watching this first half, the third inning of this World Series ball game between the Cardinals and the Dragons. This broadcast comes to you with a compliment of the Ford Motor Company and the Ford Dealers of America, and comes direct from Naven Field of Detroit. Here is the story of the Boston Impact in the third inning. For the Tigers, the Tigers back, the Rooker up along, fly to right, he was out in left center field. Dean is back, a fly to left field, set to a double by a fly to the second. Martin came up, he ought to hit the Greenberg, the play Greenberg threw out there, and he was safe on a very close decision. Rock Rock set up. Mike went down, got away with a field of second. Rock Rock left. Trace it back. Trace doubled right to a throw, and Dean marked it Rock Rock. Netwick came up and rolled the first after. Netwick was out, rolled out to Greenberg. First going to third. Collins is up, single to left, going first. Delancey doubled to the third, going Collins. Balsati was up, and he walked. Lost his single, sending into Lancey. All got again the second. Dean at that, down to the third. Horn couldn't make a play. The Lancey scored. Martin up. Rock sending. I thought he was Rock. Rock Rock was finally out. When Bridges replaced, Rowe replaced Hodgett. On a boundary, down to second. All right, come in, Tom Manning. Here we go into the last half of the third. He captures the hitter, right hand center. The pitch. It's the ball. Fast play. Here's Rowe outside. This is the first time up this afternoon for Pete Park. Here's the pitch. Strike. Carry. All one and strike one. All one, strike one. The Dizzy Dean and all had a long rest. Here's the pitch. The fire up and back. Strike two. Boxes up and Tommy Bridges on deck. Dizzy Dean has his glove off and breaking that ball. He pops the right field of the Tigers and the call is strike two and ball run. The wind up and the pitch. As a drive out of the center field, Lord Scotty moving on a little bit. He's under it. He takes it. He pops nailed that back ball and drove it on a line out to Ernie Earl Scotty, the Cardinals center fielder. One more. In the final half of the third inning. Tommy Bridges coming into the plate. Tommy walking up there rather slowly. And he steps into the batter's box. Dean getting the signal from Bill Delancey. The wind up and the first six. Strike. Tommy Bridges takes the cut up at him and misses. As the ground ball to Chris, just knocked the ball down, picks it up here to Collins, and Bridges is out. That is a hot smash that's down off the knees. Off Frankie Frick, down on second baseman. 
Roll four, five feet away. He pounced on it, flipped it over the column, and purchased his out. The Tigers have got it around. And White coming up for the second time. Jojo White, the Tigers, center fielder. The first pick. Kyle up and back at third base. Strike one. The Tigers have not made a hit off team in just tonight. Strike. Go. Jojo White stuck out his back that time and took the shot. Papa Martin came in fast and again. And he did the other day. Delancey whipped that ball right down at it. Maybe that's the match. I don't know. Strike two. White to North. Back from left handle. Two men out. No doubt of that. The pitch. As the ground on the center field. Turning off Scotty going over in the left side of the right hand. And he takes it. A pass from the Tigers in the third by Ron Scott. It's seven to nothing. They bring the St. Louis Cardinals in this ball game, which is coming to you from Maven Field, Detroit. This is everyone in queue. They should call for the only news tape. Ready for the first time of the fourth inning. So you know the Cardinals seven the times of nothing. And thank you, Fritz. Carver Manager will be first up in the final half of the fourth. Tom Bridges, you know, to the right-hander, is in the box for the Detroit Tigers. Get the signal, by the way, and we're ready to go. First hitting. All in. That was a side play right at the feet of Frankie Fritz. Frankie jumped out of the way and then fell on the ground. Now he's getting up. All in. The foul. There's the wind-up of Tommy Fritz. A bombing ball down the carrier. He comes up with a screen. He catches the Greenberg. Switches out of foot. One man out of the fourth inning. Joe Medley, the left fielder. The only man on the top of the lineup was not made a hit and jet. He made 20 during the season, and he's made 20 in the series so far. Up twice with no hit. Six. Takes a terrific cut and misses. There's the wind up again. Tip has a smash into the right field. Back going back, coming over under it. He takes it. Two men out. Nobody out. And Ripper Collins. The final. Two stars on top. There's three out. Tip out his close. And down it is for the first. There's the first set to call. As it's back down in the right field, it's a base hit. Keep back coming in. It's the ball up, returns it to Gellinger at second. And Collins has his third hit of the afternoon. Three singles. Gary Valanci, the five of Thatcher, will be next. He has a double by a two times at back. Bill Delancey, back to left hand. There's the pitch. Hit the ball on that side. This time he's looking to know it's not very big, weighing around 155, 150 pounds. There's the pitch. A bounding ball slowly down to Gellinger. Gellinger crosses to Rochelle. And here he's out of that second. The Lancy going down to the Gellinger, who passes over to Rochelle Chopper in second base. Hilton Gallup at second, there we are. No run, one hit, and no error. This time, Mitchell Chopper now, accompanied by the applause of the Detroit fans here at the stand, as it comes out here in the back and down to the fourth inning. Come in, John Manning. So far, the Cardinals have made 11 hits. Off the short set of pictures of the Tigers. And the Tigers of the American League, Andy Price, has not made a hit as yet. Will go reaching base on an error. Tyson Cochran leads off in the last half of the fourth. He winds up the pitch. Let's go far. Higher inside. And the foul is one nothing on Mike Crocker. That was the wind up again. 
Right turn. 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 Some of the boys, Karen Gellinger, some of them, Karen Gellinger. Valley himself, Karen Gellinger. You and I have put it up, Tom, to shoot everybody. That's right, he's put it up to shoot everybody. Gellinger gets a nice hand, and all ready to go. Three lines up in the first pitch for Gellinger. Strike, Karen. Here's he be. It's still fighting down out there, in spite of the fact that he has a seven run lead. Taking no chances. The pitch. It's a to the the right field. That the ball up, it into the overlay, and just second, and carry it. the first, the first, the 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 fast down over the first is just a little bit too high. All back in the fourth inning, one out, carrying her on first. Stars will hit him, all run. The fly ball, short left field, the ropes are going back. Mendes coming in, Mendes, and he has it. In short, left field. Two out, carrying her on first. Then he will go. We just don't stress that. Who's getting left handed this afternoon? Bill Bachman. Killer will go. Team takes the step. And the pitch. That's too hard. There we are. Is he doing it out of the box, looking in there, getting a signal? Now he throws the star. The step. Five and five, and the first, six, 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 Johnson, then it's back, a fly to Medwick, Medwick getting in fast in the short left, and took it for the out. Look down, at that fourth game to the second, riding one down the face, first walking to the roadsters having the trap. No run, one hit, no error. And the score is seven to nothing, favoring the North Star from seven runs made in the third inning. Eleven hits. The final is out there, set it so far to one hook for the short pass. We go in to the fifth inning now. With Ernie O'Brien, California boy, coming up there, rubbing the, sending out his eyes, he steps up to the batter's box. After a the round, they just walk up to the mound, and here's Tom Manning to get it to you. Well, four, ready for the first half of the tip, Ernie O'Brien, the front of the field of the car, left-hand batter, who has a single on the face on, four ounces up. The pitch, first turn. Tommy Bridges, set a fast turn, first wire, right down the alley. Coming. The high fly ball. Out to short left field. Guy from coming in. Waiting for it. And he has it. One goal. Captain Leo DeRosa coming up. Yesterday afternoon, you know, Leo had three hits. He's just about the happiest kid in the United States. I'll tell you that. He had such himself. He's not much of a banner, but he was all right yesterday. The first six, six pounds. We will have one hit out of two to the plate this afternoon. Fifth inning, one out, nobody on. The wind up. There's a high fly ball to left field. Gotham coming over about five yards under the plate. He has it. Two out, nobody on. Dizzy Dean will be the next batter. 
Busy team sitting on the cut, waiting for him. Turn it back. Ice coming up there, walking very slowly. Busy getting an ice cap from the fan to his He steps up to the plate. The paper flying around down there, they step back. Time is just going for a moment. And when he looks down, gets his foot on it, while the fans are having some fun, gets away from him. Finally, he catches up with it, and they're ready to go. Those guys are the fifth inning, the five, seven, five are jumping throughout, nobody on. Dean is up, and the pitch, straight, Dean. This is the look and the roar of the crowd comes up as he swings all the way around, pivoting, and then falls to the ground. There's the pitch again. Sends it to Dean, swings the way back. He's trying to please the crowd, so he doesn't care. They're getting a kick out of it. Two strikes of Hader. This is being taken three great big long horses swing. All the way from the west coast to the east coast will be missed them. There he goes out in the final half of the fifth inning. Owen, Owen, and Paul Owen. And here's what happened. Only North County first up. Fired out to Glasgow. Here are the Rochers. Asshole fired to Glasgow. Dizzy Dean went camera up. Time took three. Well, wait. That will lead to me. And then went over to the Cardinal. Dug out. And got a drink of water. And now he's walking slowly out to the pitching water. They've got their pitching duty against the Cardinals in the last half of the fifth inning. North Island, the Cardinals have scored seven runs. They've made six runs in the last half of the fifth inning. Then the recipient has three bases on ball. He gets up seven runs, 11 hits, three bases on ball. Dallas Tigers, on the other hand, the back out four times. They have made one hit, that's by Donna Ganger in the fourth inning. Billy Rick Ganger hits base in the second inning, and two of the Lakers error. With one reach, Tiger half of the fifth inning, Hank Greenberg. Will be first up. And Paul Bowen will try to play for you. He's in there. Here's the pitch. A ball. Going outside to take Hank Greenberg will back right. The Lancey takes some glasses out to Dennis Dean. He's out there on the mound. Standing just at the edge of the shadow, which cuts across the pitcher's mound. He goes into his wind up. Shoots it in. A ball. Right just about the same position. Still outside with the right handed batter. Ball two. Greenberg swings his bat back and forth, moving it around down 30 feet. Then Dean goes in his line of the pitch. He swings for a strike. Two balls and strike one. That's the count of Big Hank Greenberg's first batter for the Flaggers here in their half of the fifth inning. The score is 7 nothing. favor the St. Louis Cardinals. Dean out there, he's put on the rubber. Gets the signal and goes wind up. Here it is. He strikes one out. Into the right center. I'm going down the field for Green. And that's Ross Rossi. He gets in the straight. And Big Hank gets down on first base here. Same goes. Here he's got it. Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen in San Jose, California. Two up there for the batters at the last minute. The Lancey is knocked out and handed the ball to Des Dean, a new one, and he's rubbing it off, taking the cover against Trudy. Rubbed his foot across in front of the rubber. Takes himself a throw over there and walks over. Puts his foot into it, glances on Greenberg, gets a pick. A ball outside to Marvin Owen, who's batting right. Now the collegiate ball, Bob Owen. He's down there batting now with one arm. Nobody out in the pit. He catches one high out into the right center. Rock Rock goes back under it and has it in the net. And Greenberg was dropping two thirds away down the deck and chases back over to first. One arm, one out, and sweet box you up. Sweet box. A Hoosier lab. Evansville, Indiana. Go find his jersey. Beat at six six two zero seven. Just his staff as he stepped up there. He bought right, facing Dizzy Dean. Here you turn the week back to Greenberg as he comes up to fifty two on the left. Grants over his shoulder. Greenberg takes a little lead in the pitch. A foul back into the screen. Foul strike one. They start that rhythmic tapping in the stands. Listen. Dean gets the signal, steps up on the mound, goes into his set, bounces over, and here's the pitch. 
that when you strike through, facing it cleanly, a fuller on what seems but a cross there then. The Lancer shaft was down there, give the signal. Wind up in the set. Here it is. A bounding foul over into the Tigers' dugout. Going in there were one of the boys, three my take which close it down into the northern recesses of the dugout. Go through Fox up there, strike two on him. Seeing with his back to Greenberg, Lance Nettie over his shoulder as it comes up, going to his mind up in the track, and again, another glance, here it is. A ball, 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 ball there by Harry Guy, who is down there. And it's one ball in strike two. Harry Guy will call him behind the plate today. Ball one in strike two. And Greenberg on first. Wow, here's the pick. Second. He got the left. Back in the back off. Greenberg. Down there. Going third base. Looking down at it. As he saw in the one corner. He's back. his charges. And Van got across the more left side. And he hit the dirt down there on the side. He makes his leg. Here's Tommy Bridges. Tommy Bridges is back. 18, here's the pick. A ball strike on Tommy Bridges. Two on, one out, strike one. Last out of the first inning. Four, seven, I think there's a ten with staff rules. Tommy Bridges is being tired to pick you up. Here's the pick. A ball strike. Two. Gene working very hard down there on the mound, not facing Bridges. Greenberg takes the lead off third. He's popped off second, far off. Long shot of second minor. Here's the pick. A ball high inside the right hand batter. Ball one and strike two. Dizzy, that's his first. He's fouled it and pulled it to Red Peak and that's Jay Cap. Jay Cap with a flaming side no boot. Goes to his lineup. Here's the pick. Good job at Gordon, they're kind of two. The case now by Gregory West. Land to Gregory. Gregory, truly. He gives as the place he starts coming this way. Gregory walks in there now, trailing his back behind him. He's back left. Team has walked out again. Again, is pulling at himself and his back. Taking his certain sizes. Mr. Ryan, two spots. Also ordered Jim goes on third. Dan Gray throwing the rubber, watching the Lancey for the signal. Dan Gray working with Ian Big Cat. Mid out there, grabs his hand, then steps back off the rubber. Comes up to it again, again, this is his charger. Doesn't know he's lined up very fast. Here's the pick. A down to the second. Here's the pick. He's going to hit it to the bottom. There we are. He's firing the side. Come in, Don Manning. Well, that is a play by the Lancey again. A brilliant play. The one of those technical players for that out. Frank Greenberg is first up. He swings it to right center. Got in. Ends on a hole of one. And hit a square toward right field. If he throws it up, wind is going right to right field this afternoon. And it's pulled up there. And that's the dead box that you don't know to make the catch. He cracks. Then drops the double. He looks at a heads up face on him. And a beautiful next fly. Feeling we're going to be into it. Greenberg's back with third. Tommy Bridges don't stand up. That was called out on strike. Don't stand up. Swim hard, go to top the ball. It was a hard bounder, slow bounder. Neil Dorff is coming over right in front of the second base cushion. Fix the ball up, hold up. Two hits, and go over. He's come to the conclusion of the fifth inning. And the nationwide broadcast of the World Series games are brought to you by the Ford Motor Company. They go in the first half of the sixth inning. The Cardinals coming to bat. 
Papa Nelson, Jody Park, Papa Longhorn, Father, Swift, Carver Bridger, and Mrs. Cockwell, who called the battle. Sure. And the Cardinals leading seven, and having a couple of marks and take his place in the batter's box down there. Down to Lover, steps to the back of the box. This is going to line up early. A strike, a looper coming over there. Low ball, ball of call, strike. Strike one. Couple of poses in staff as Bridges. Now he's stepped up onto the mound. Bridges is wound up. Here it is. We've got one in the short left. Ball of base hit. Round first. Going on down in the second half and Mr. Crow in the hotel and crashed him and his ball face by Brick Allen. Lowbrow taking the draw from Jasmine. Who's feeling it out there? Third, down to the business floor as a single and an error. The error. On the balloon, the pitch to the next batter. Jack Ross rocks up there and hit the ball. Wide and outside to the left handed batter. Double marking down on second. Bridges goes to his neck. Here's the pitch. He starts to fly out into the left center. Gladwin over under it and has it farther out. Double Martin starts to go down a thousand wings again to Marvin and Martin is held on second. One out, one on. And Frank straight you up at the plate. He comes up pulling at his salary. Pulling at the peak of his trap and adjusting it. They all seem to want them to get themselves perfectly comfortable before they step into the batter spot. Frank, he always thinks he's got a little toe hold. He's left foot and he's left up there. Swings his back back and forth. He's got him a couple of times, up and down. And throws his back on his shoulder. Look at this around Mark and here's the pitch. A drive off into left center. Well, the catch up to White comes in, has it the wings again the second, and marks it again for to hold the base by the pitch throw in. Cross around for the moment. E. Greenberg and he wings it over the pitches. Joe Medwick follows straight. He's in there now, facing batting right, marching down on second. Has no hit. He sets the captain. Here he is. A foul strike. On Joe Medley. First ball will never join. The only man in the Cardinal lineup. Got a hit to set the captain. Here's the pitch. He swings hard and drives one high. Out into seat. Right to the down back of Dahlia. He starts his skating around second. The runner is in. He goes on down to third. The relay. And he's safe at third base. Rod Roy. He runs into the third base. Stop in the back. Joe Medwick, he just got a hard one down there, and there's a little in the boys between my boy and Joe Medwick. He came in hard in that time, pushing the first base from the waist front. Medwick is tapping on the back. Both, Ty Perkins, down over between the boys. There's going to be a little hard to lose on there for the moment. A lot of discussion down here on third base as to who did what to who. Well, the flag is a bag was actually blocked, and he hit him there unintentionally hard, running into it with his foot. And he played in there, go down and take the relay in from three spots. Well, he seemed to have it up down there without any misunderstanding. They thought he was right on the back side of the ball. Everybody's friendly again. One back to the other. Boys back to the other. Everybody's 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 back to the other. Run in, two out, and Medwick on third. Rick Collins is top. Medwick is back in the back now. Medwick is in the right and back. Medwick is back in the right and back. Here's the pitch. A foul strike. Low ball, cutting the end, cross ball, looping out over there. Right one. Is the count on him? Here's the wound up. 
the book. I am the poetry of the late great W. Jim Daly, and strike one of the gods. Going back to the book. This last one, how did this second day run? Single and an error. Here's the official story, down on that one. The other on center dealer, Jojo White. So Rip Collins is down on second. Two out, two runs in, and Bill Delancey coming up. Tapping the plate for all. The score is now nine to nothing. Here's the table of Cardinals. Here's the pitch. He swings out, missing it clearly for strike one. The man who steps clear out the batter's box on that, wipes it off his hands in the dirt before he comes back up. While Pidge is waiting for him, he steps out and goes up the mound. Dusted his hand on the Glasenberg again. Shot of the grandstand now sets as well as half the second base, stepping through short and curving on around over first. Pidge has looked around the drift island, through the pitch. He's got the high towering high fire back and forth, and goes back fast. But he's flat where he can't do a thing with it into the boxes above third and back of there. So Marvel and clap back in. Pops the blast in the sand as it bound away from those who try to get it. Lands again. Back in the batter's back. Clap two is the count on him. Two runs in. The inning where's the pitch. He swings hard at it again. He stops the third strike at his last time to Jim Berg. While the out, retiring the flag. Come in, John Maddox. Three hits and two hours. Pepper Martin was placed up, and he singles the left field. He wants to strike him, runs over, pulls double the ball, getting an hour. Jack Wolfram, five to thousand. Quick, five to one. Joe Ludwig then got a hold of him and drove it against the barrier in right center field, throwing Pepper Martin. And Joe Ludwig, one of the third place, he and Marlboro trying to look over there. The sun was sliding. He left five hours down. The boy got up and squared off. But before any damage could be done, the players got between them and the fight was over. The sun is going out to left field. They're killing apples and bananas and oranges. Everything imaginable is being passed out on the field. That's going to cover. Yes, hundreds of pieces of truth. That was coming out there now. It's a... It's a terrible situation for the camera out there on the field. Joe and Edwards, the players are telling Joe to come in off the field. That was that. They have oranges and apples. The preacher likes to know. They're still in line for hours and hours. Waiting for tickets to get in here. They brought their lunch with them. They're not going to eat at this afternoon, but they are still at Edwards. And left field guy looks like an orchard. A wound carrying orchard. Apples. Some tackles of every description lying out along the field there. The ground keepers there are rushing out there. That's how it's Rick Owen. That's how it's Sam and Al Stowe rushed out there. In future out, Al Stowe and Joe Ludwig, who stood in the third base. Perhaps the unintentionally stood in to Marlboro. And the boys got a bit of an argument over there. And the future out there has a taking part. In the, in the argument, I throwing everything that they can get their hands off out into left field. The regular Northern Shield clown crew have all gone out there and all they're picking up the bottles and everything, but the fans are standing there waving their handkerchiefs, newspapers and hats and everything. And Joey Mudley, the card no left fielder. In the meantime, let us get back to the ball game. Let's be one of these five or half of the sixth inning that will be mine to nothing in favor of the Cardinals. Not only again, the first half of the trick, Harkin, single to left field, went to second, and Giles on Sunday. Grab back, then five to Giles, quick, five to right. Then Mudrick triples, throwing Harkin, and then the assurance of third base. Harkin, then single to center field. It was called fourth hit of the afternoon. It sent Mudrick across the plate, making it the final of the last of his time before the hard to reach nothing. Five, 
It's going to be some moment there before play can be resumed at Taven Field here at the club. Your players, the last congregated down there, is just in front of the shortstop position. Basil and all of the American League, Team Jordan, and Bill Trump of the National League. They're having some sort of a conference down there. So all of the panels are in a clap to the huddle right at the shortstop position. And we're going to turn the microphone over to four fans who think you see something different now. So, the conference of umpires is going on down there now, Tom. It's different from the several conferences which have gone on before. We got several down here while this basket throwing was going on. Now the four of them, the U.S. Army Commanders jumped over to 69 to fight the first. What their decision has been after this reception given to Joe Medwick out there in left field will be announced in just a moment. The players are in that position. The team is walking back up to the mound. One of the boys carrying his left. This Cardinal rep, Jersey out. That wick has walked out there. He certainly seems to be able to take it. He stood there facing the fans, taking all the booze and the cheers which they offered him. Now he's walked out there and there's that. And more of the food is starting to come down. Herman, Andy, are starting to slide down around Joe Medwick again. The food is, it's quite good to hear the fans. The drinkers out of that field are showing their displeasure with the happening at third base. Which, of course, no one can tell just exactly what it was. Both the boys batted each other as they left. But Nedwick walking out there on the field is getting the same part of the every time, and the groundskeeper is out again. What do you feel there, Tom Manning? Just at the moment, here's something going to happen. We're going to follow this play all the way out for you. Manager, manager Mickey Coughlin, of the Detroit Tigers, a great favorite in Detroit, has been asked by Frankie Quick to go to left field to see what can be done about it. Mickey Coughlin, uh, being a big sport, is walking out to left field with his bat in his hand and is now holding up his hand, asking the preacher right to refrain from throwing anything else out on the field. Mickey Coughlin, however, doesn't go all the way out to left field. He stopped out there at the moment and is talking to Clem and Rick Owen. Now he's coming back toward the plate and once again, three, six, nine, 10, 11, about a dozen of the ground keepers are out there, and for the ground keepers to the field. Oh, the came out of the fence. It stands over there. Just barely missed one of the, the ground keepers out there. Like a big tail trying to pick up the fruits and the bottles that's out there. Mickey Cockle is watching now and is standing right at the field. Down up over the side there. Just, just playing the foul. He's making a great foul. Still up in his box. And has fallen. Joe uh, Medwick over to his box. Joe Medwick is coming in to left field. All of the Cardinal players are running in. All going right to the line of the box. But they are stopped at the line by the uh, field players. Joe Medwick now is over uh, with his pack off. Gentlemen, he's standing there talking to the commissioner of baseball. The photographers are standing out there on the field that climbed over the barrier, and they are taking pictures of Joe Medwick and Randy Frick as they stand there talking to the commissioner of baseball, the judge, Punisher, Hansen, Landon, who is occupying a box along the first baseline. Mickey Cochran has also walked over and is in the conference now. Uh, Greenberg has also come over. Uh, the umpires are, are walking over now. Let's see. The uh, sun uh, has got forward to the commissioner's box, and the commissioner is there doing all of the talking at the moment with Ludwig, Frisch, Cochran, and Greenberg all standing there with their arms around and a close huddle so that no one except the umpires and the players will be able to hear what uh, the commissioner has to say. He has waved his hand up in the air now, like some player would say, to get out of the park or something, but Frankie Frisch. Frankie Fish is saying something back to him uh, and pulling up his trousers as he walks away. I believe that it's not official as yet that Medwick is off the table. We do not say that Commissioner Landers has put him out because that is not official. But after the conference, at the box, at Commissioner Tennessee, Martin Landers, Joe Medwick walks to the Cardinal's bench. We think 
That's the commissioner has ordered Frankie Frick to replace public in West Indian. That is at least our observation from our broadcast institution. Now for the benefit of our fans of friends, perhaps, who would like to catch up, those who are getting, just getting home from work. I want to tell you that in the first half of the sixth inning here, the score, the St. Louis Cardinals of the Master League time, Detroit Tigers, nothing. It was in the sixth inning. The Joe Mudley threw the ball in his deep right center field. The ball turned off the barrier out there, and it was the first play at third base. Joe Mudley left his feet and slid into third. He and Moore Ballard, the Tiger third baseman, both fell to the ground. They got up and pulled off. The players stepped between them, and when Joe Mudley went out to play, left field for the Cardinals, he beat you right. Threw everything that they had. Many of them were carrying lunches, threw oranges, Apples, bananas, and sandwiches have every description and of every make out on the field, including a lot of pop bottles. The field is cleared off several times, but Senator Martin Landers, after conference, has ordered Joe Medwick out of the lineup and six fourth to play left field. You know, Dizzy Dean will be allowed to take a few moments now to warm up after this round delay. And the first Tiger hitter in the sixth inning will be manager Mickey Cochran. And here is Paul Tom to tell you about the final half of the six. The score, St. Louis 9, Detroit nothing. Four. Tom, that's the first time the judge man has ever participated in a decision in a game since his attention to the half league of baseball. Here's the tip. A strike called on Mickey Gossler. Judge Lander making the decision down here, standing up in his box with the managers before him and the two players who were concerned in the disruption at third base. Next to the division, Penny never got him full of in. Here's the next pitch. He cracks the fly out into right field. And Blossom going back to the line, make a nice catch of it. Making it one out. You know, we're in the last half of the sixth inning. Mickey got the first man up for the Tigers as they trail nine to nothing. Coming up in their half of the sixth. Sally Geringer is next at bat. Fuller. Fuller is the new left fielder for the St. Louis Cardinals. Dizzy Dean had a long time and tried to warm up several times. Then they tried to resume play, dropped his sweater, put it back on. When the boot started flying off in their left field again, three or four times that happened. Each time he had to retire to put on his sweater and try to keep his arm warm. Then he came back warm up again. Geringer's in there now as Mr. Dotson dropped on over to the dugout. One out, nobody on. Here's Geringer's batter in the pit. A ball strike. Butting in there, swerving in and butting the outside corner. Strike one on Charlie Gellinger. He has his bat back on his shoulder. Puts it up again. Here's the wind up. The pitch. A bounder down the shore. De Rocha takes it. Just it over to first, and he's out. A beautiful pickup by Leo De Rocha. And the crowd is applauding him here. He made a beautiful pickup of a bounder coming in fast on a shooting over Rip Collins for the second half retiring Charlie Gellinger. Two Scotsman. Big old dude from Salem, New Jersey, comes in there now, taps the rubber, pulls his strap, and swings his bat a couple of times. And right to full length of it after getting his convert on his hand. Here's the wind up at Tuchlin. He tracks the fly with coming over here. Just the line. Rip Collins is back under. Just the line and has it in the net for the third out. All right, Tom Manning, come right in. No one, no hits, Grant, no errors. Mickey Cochran first up, slides to a clock. Carrying her, comes off to Rosie to Collins. And that's what it was in the of the Cardinals. Came in and threw a big hand from the Tiger Rudy to that slow play. It was a slow boundary. Came in fast, took the ball up, and hooked it under hand over the first just ahead of Gary. Two thousand. Then fouled out to first base and passed. No one, no hit, and no error. Went to two six innings. That was the seventh round of the World Series. St. Louis Cardinals have scored seven runs in the third inning and when it took ball at the end of six innings, St. Louis Brown, who tells nothing. The Tigers started off there this afternoon, and Brown, Offset, and Bridges came in as we placed with in the third inning. Bridges is still in the box. A little right hand third ball artist who has pitched that brilliant ball throughout the American League campaign. The boy who pitched that grand game against the Cardinals the other day. He was in there this afternoon. And Ernie Orsatti will lead off for the cards in the seventh. Four bombs. Ernie Orsatti has stepped up there to the batter's box now. Harry Geisel. Up at the plate. 
Question from over here comes Bill Clam over to get a piece of paper. Yes, that was what was wrong here, delaying play as we go into the seventh inning. Bill Clam had started over, and he's down here talking to one of the coaches back here on the line who's raced back into the dugout. Now Bridge is still warming up with Mickey Cochran as our Saturday has stepped away from the plate. Bill Clem is walking slowly across the diamond. He's umpiring at third today. Tommy Bridges, whom Tom Manning was just speaking about, pitching grand ball since the third inning, pitching ninth ball. He did a grand job on Sunday. Madwick has been taken off the bank and is retiring to the clubhouse. Field the motion, and we have six. Members of the Detroit Constabulary escorting Joe Medwick around there on the stand. Heaven's referring that the eye of the fans in Detroit would lead them to some rice act against Joe Medwick. Yes? We have, have another regiment joining the band, two of them meeting the Tiger dugout with one of the policemen motioning to the fans to sit down. They walk over there, go down through the Tiger dugout, and back onto the stand. Joe disappearing under there as the police accompany him. Now in the cross out, he's in there. Bridges is facing him. Here's the wind up and the pitch. A high foul into the press box back to third base. For strike one. He steps back into the batter's box. Bridges is dropping the ball into his glove. As he looks down to make it for the signal to wind up. Shoots it across the plate, but it's high. Inside, batting left handed batter away for a ball. Ball one and strike one. Here's the wind up. He cracks a high one out into center field. White is under maneuvering around and has it for the out. Ernest Arsati retires and Leo DeRocher comes up next. DeRocher, the captain and snapping shortstop, one of the most graceful shortstops and probably the finest short ever witnessed in the sport of baseball. Comes up there now, back right, strikes the rubber, faces Tommy Bridges, who's blowing on his hand down there. He gets the signal, then goes into his windup. Here's the pitch. He cracks one hard out into deep right center. He's rounding first. White is chasing the ball. It bounds off the belly. He goes on down to second round, second, going on down to third. The relay is in, in into Gehringer, taking it, and he's on third base. A three bagger for Leo DeRocher. One out. And Leo DeRocher on third. <laughs> As Mike Gonzalez talks to him down there, he takes off his cap, and they're applauding him here in the stand. Fine looking, and they're applauding Dizzy Dean as he comes up there to crack the plays of the rubble of his bat. Bat on third, one out. Here's the wind up. Here's the pitch. A fire back into the screen, back of home plate. A new ball goes into play, and Tommy Bridges starts breaking the cover and dirtying it up to his satisfaction. He comes up there, throws the rubber again. Pat on Dean's shoulder. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. A bounder down to third. Marvel and holds him at third, then throws Dean out at first. Owen holds the roaster on third and makes the foot out, throwing over to Big Hank Greenberg. Two out. Leo DeRocher on third base, and Peppery Martin. Little old Pepper down here, wiping his hands in the dirt behind the plate before he comes up and just his belt, closes the peak of his cap and steps into the batter's box. Taps the old rubber plate down here as Bridges goes into his windup. Here's the pitch. A strike call. He to just slip that outside corner to the right handed batter. Set. And then a wind up. And the pitch. Attempts to bunt, and it's a strike. Strike two. Come by Harry Geisel, holds up his hand, showing the count. Strike two on the batter. Mickey gets up, that's giving the signal. Here's the wind up. A grounder, down to Charlie Geringer, second. Who it at the moment? And the runner is straight at first on the error, scoring Leo DeRocher with the 10th from the ball game. 10 to nothing, favor the St. Louis Cardinals. The error on Charlie Garrett. Jack Wuprock follows Martin in the batting order of the Cardinals. He steps up there now batting left. 
With Pepper Martin on first. A run in. Two out. Here's the pitch. A ball. High it outside to the left-handed batter. Ball one in the count. Two out. And Pepper Martin on first. And a run in. Ten to nothing now. Favor St. Louis. A pile work first. But Pepper is back there. He's put up against the bag. Calling around trying to keep his balance. Before Hank Greenberg left keep that ball. Throwing it back to Bridges. And again, he takes the lead off first. Dancing around down here. The pitch. He throws down. Mickey sends it down. And it's piled down there. The second hand. He stayed in row. Right off the bag. Rogel goes over and takes it. They're scoring it as a stolen base. The runner coming in hard at the same time as the ball. Ball rolling with it. Scoring that as a stolen base for Pepper Martin. Jack Ross Rock down here at bat. We just press it back up on the mound. Glances around a second and shoots the pitch and he drives one. Fire out into deep left center. Gosling chasing and going over his head. Martin coming on in. Ross Rock is rounding second. Gosling makes a throw in. And it's a two base hit for Jack Ross Rock. Scoring the 11th run of the ball game. 11 to nothing in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Greenberg takes the toss from Rogel, who got the throw in from Goslin. Rob Rock now on second, and Frank Frick at that. Here's the pitch. He back hard at the first and hard one, goes back on it to foul. Way back up there, goes back on it fast, but doesn't quite catch up with it, and it's up for a long sight. Strike one. Frank, he steps out of the box. Wipes his hands with dirt, rubs him on his trousers, runs one hand the length of his bat before he comes back up there to face Tommy Bridges, who has the signal now for Mickey Cotton to straighten up, throwing the rubber, going to his set, glances around, here's the pitch. Keep that one high, out into right field. The peak box is going under and has it while they are retiring the side. Come in, Tom Manning. In the final half of the seventh, Roy Ozzotti was first up and fired to White. Neil DeLocher, Sam Triple. Dizzy Dean bombed it out towards the Greenberg. Papa Martin hit a, a ground ball to Gallier. Gallier fumbled the ball, getting an hour, and DeLocher scored. Jack Ross walked the flat. Papa Martin stole second. Ross Ross then got a hold of one and drove it against the barrier in deep left center field for two bases. Sending Barton across the plate. Push, wide to pop. Two runs, two hits, and one out. As we're going to be last half of the seventh inning, score St. Louis Cardinals 11, Detroit Tigers nothing. All is up for that old seventh inning stretch. The Tigers coming to bat, and Billy won't go. Tigers short stop, left hand had it. The hitter will be first up. Lizzy Dean, you know, and Bill Delancey, former Cardinal batter. Bill O'Dell has picked up Bill Delancey's mask, and Bill flips the ball off for second, and takes his mask, and we're ready to go. The Tiger half of the seventh inning, fourth bomb. Bill O'Dell, short stop from Springfield, Illinois. Batting now for the Tigers as we go into their half of the seventh. Dean is down on the mound getting the signal from Bill Delancey. He goes into his windup, and here's the pitch. He swings out of it, fouls it, it's foul goes down back at the home plate. Bill Delancey. I thought the ball had gone up into the air for the moment. Started plugging his pass before he realized the ball was down on the ground. Other right, guys have stepped out and dust up the plate. Bill Rogel kicked some dirt out of his heels. Stepped up there again, pulled at the peak of his cap. Faces Dirty Dean, who's out there on the mound with his characteristic stamp before he goes into his wind up. Here it is, and the pitch. Foul popped up into the hands of Leo DeRoster. There's short. For the out. One guard, the first batter up, popping up to the other road. We have Hank Greenberg, the bounce boy, New York City. Up there for the Tigers. Down here, kicking hard to dirt. He bats right. Kicking hard to dirt down the batter's box. Here's the pitch. A strike. Paul, stepping the inside, gone to the plate. We big Hank Greenberg. He's batting right. Nobody on, one gone. This will wind up in the pit. He offered hard at a slow ball, but it goes sailing over the line now, and it's just a long strike. Strike two. 
The roar of the crowd, thinking it was a home run. It got straight out that left field line. That was a serving foul all the time. And wheeled across there. And he's up there now with strike two on him. The Lancey signaling to team. Gordon with wine at the pitch. He swings hard, going down the other strikeout route. Two out. Greenberg retiring one, swinging at one with plenty of hop and plenty of break on that curve. Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen, the third tiger batter up in the seventh inning. The score 11 nothing in favor of St. Louis. They made seven runs in the third, two in the sixth, and two in the seventh. Here's the pitch. A ball, too low. Fancy toss the crowd against the team. I keep first in with catches miss. Give the signal. Here it comes. A ball. Ball two again. Too low to my boy. Lancy walks her out the front of the plate. Before he shoots it out the team again. He's standing there motionless. Then goes into his windup and he gets the signal. Here it is. A founder down to Frank Fisher takes it the extra drive, shoots it over to Collins for the out. Retiring the side. Three up and three down. Come in, Tom Mack. No one, no risk, no errors. No kill. Pops up to the Rocher. Greenberg, stuck out. Five on, found it out, first to Collins. The two series broadcast are brought to you through the courtesy of the Ford Motor Company. It's sent to you directly from Maven Shield, Detroit. You are listening to WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News. The time is 225 and 20 seconds, Central Standard Time. Now, before we do the first half of the eighth inning here at Maven Field, we have a change in the size of pitchers. Now, we're pushing. Now, we're coming the top. It's taken out. And first up, Mark Bowman. Mark Bowman is going to be the first one to get out. And first up, Mark Bowman. That's a powerful figure to push away. Is Richard Washington Sullivan. Great relief, sitting, injured, and his early days. He's now over Tigers, and he comes in here as the father of the back in the eighth inning. Cat Carberry, big heavy set, right handed. Cat Cumberbatch, and here is Paul Cobb. Bob is in there breaking the cover on new ball as Charles Bullock, new left fielder. He's up at that to come here to pick. A ball. Forcing the right handed batter away from the plate. Ball one is the count on Charlie Fuller. Drop the rod to Pennsylvania. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Again, a ball inside the right handed batter. Ball two. Avery, he comes from Sigmund, Texas. He's just come in here to leave in the eighth inning. Here's the wind up. He catches a hot one down. Off short, wind short, and second base. It goes on up center field for a single for Charlie Six Fuller. Who's down first now with Rip Collins. You up at the plate. And Rip first, he's placed there in the batting box, smashing the rubber with his back and swinging his back forcefully back and forth as he comes up there to face the offering of Purple Marjorie. One on and nobody out to score 11 nothing favorite of Edward Cardinal. Here we go into the first half of the eighth inning. Here's the wind up in the pit. He backs one high out into right center. Pete Fox is going over under Dan Haggard and Fuller to a chase almost down to second as the race back to first. One out, one on. Dick Fuller on first and Bill DeLancey, the Cardinal catcher, coming up to bat. Garinger just to throw in. He tosses the ball over to Barbary who wipes his hand off on the rocking bag. One out, one on. First half of the eighth inning, the score 11 to nothing. Favor St. Louis. Delancey's down there, swinging his bat back and forth. Here's the pitch. He cracks one down. Just second. Gillinger takes it, shoots it over to first. Not far to make a play. Pullis was already down on second, and there's two gone. Delancey out. Gillinger to Greenberg. Ernie Orsatti. Ernie Orsatti, whom we've told you, is from Los Angeles, California, and who has received an injury in almost every game of this series but who has played sterling ball all the way through another left. I believe he's only been out of one game when Fuller took place in out in center field when the injuries were just too painful and legs too stiff in performance. Here's the pitch. A ball. Low, almost in the dirt. Stockton picking it out of it. 
Big Polis down on second. Barbary glances around at him. Playing on the mountain. Shoots his pick and pass it high and outside. Well, ball two. Purple Marbury again, wiping off the cover of the ball, and he steps up there to throw the rubber. Looking around hard at the pull of the pick. A ball, ball three. High one and inside. Jerome Osadi, who back left. He swings it up very slowly and drooped it down. Here's the pick. And the walk. A ball, too low. Osadi is giving a walk. He's just the way he pops down the first of that right leg is still bothering. Two men on, two out, and Leo DeRoser at back. Mr. Norris Marbury, M A R B E R R Y. Marbury is picking. Out of the top right now, is Mr. DeRoser. Man on first, a man on second, two down, and strike one of them, Mr. DeRosa. He awaits for the next one. Oh, that one almost hit him. Came in close. He backed away from it. A very nice step. Right back on that time to keep it from being a wild pitch. Very nicely caught right back on. Now, that's what the ball battle back for the second base. It's taken for the fourth of one party. That is where it's assigned. In the eighth inning, the first half of the eighth. And we have, in that place, for the Cardinals, no run. One hit, no error, and two men off of the base. Starting to play on the last half of the eighth inning, and coming to bat is Fox, the right fielder. Mr. Fox is down there, ready for the ball to sit down again. Dean pitches it down, Fox lines it out toward left field. The ball lands way back in the corner and left. The string taken out there and thrown right down toward third base in a fast throw. The ball is stopped by Martin, and it almost pulls up on second base with his second double of the afternoon. Fox doubling right down in the left field corner on the first ball of tip. Tap, ladies and gentlemen, being the four tip of Chrissy Team this afternoon. Now we shall see who comes in to that for Robert, if any. You know, the largest score on a shutout in the World Series was 9 to nothing when it was 1905. Matherson took that game. Right now the score is 11 to nothing in favor of St. Louis. And of course, these Detroit Americans want to get one run in at least as he possibly can here before this game ends. It's the last half of the eighth, and the man on scoring spot, Walker is coming to bat for Marbury. W-A-L-K-E-R. Walker batting for Marbury. Walker batting for Marbury. That's up there, a right hand hitter. Dean ready to pitch swim with a man on second base, and nobody down in the last half of the eighth. Here's a pitch. First ball pitch is a long fly, way out toward left. Left fielder's after it. Bullock takes the ball, runs a few steps forward, and whips it down toward third base. The walker is out on the first ball, picks on a high fly to left field. Next man coming to the bat is Jojo White. White coming up with one down, a man on second. Ball has just been returned to Chrissy Jean. Chrissy's he's getting ready to walk toward the mound. He comes up on the mound. No chance for a windup. The spot's over on second in scoring position. White the left hand hitter. Dean Fletcher looks toward second. Here's the first pitch, and White takes the first strike. One ball. Just above the hit on the outside corner. One strike to White. Fox taking his lead at second. Nobody seems to be bothering him at all. White again swings in close to the inside line of the batsman's box. Puts the bat back out of his shoulder, but the way he has turned fast. He hasn't had a hit this afternoon. He's sitting in the black bat. He has a nice new weapon. Here's the next pitch. The ball is called for strike. That's in the corner on the inside, just at the hip. Strike to the Jojo. He was hitting 158 at the start of this game, as far as his series hitting is concerned. That has dropped considerably so far, with three trips to play the no hits this afternoon. Here's the pitch. He takes a swing at it, and it's called the right three. You're out. White swings at it for strike three, and that brings the Dizzy Dean's strikeout record, and the record of hits off him to be the same. Four strikeouts, four hits off him. Ricky Carson comes to bat. The idol of the Detroit fans, a great ball player. Steps up there, left-hand player. Man on second with two down. He hits the first ball way out toward right field. Looks like it might be foul, but the wind is carrying it over near the foul line. That is taken care of very nicely by Mr. Rothrock on a fly in foul territory. 
With the tires beside, in the eighth inning, we have the Detroit Tigers making no runs. There was one hit, there were no errors committed, and they had one man left to the base. Ladies and gentlemen, the broadcasts of all the World Series games this year have been sent to you by the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer, producers and distributors of Ford and Lincoln cars and Ford trucks. They hope you have enjoyed these games. We're starting the first half of the night, ladies and gentlemen. First man coming to bat should be up here in just a moment for the St. Louis Cardinals. Calling for attention out here on the last secret system, but right now we're watching to have Dizzy Dean's watch for his turn of bat. All right, starters pitching. A was his captain. The first man at bat is Dizzy Dean. We're starting the first half of the night, and the score is 11 0 in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Carter swings up the fifth, the first one out of Dizzy Dean. Here's the pick. Dizzy takes it close to the belt. Ball. What? Ball on to Dizzy. Dizzy watching for another one. Carter swings up there, winds up very easily. Pitches the ball in. Dizzy hits the ball out toward left field. Carter's over after it, takes the line drive for the out. Dean out on the line drive to Carter. for the first out in the first half of the ninth inning. Next man coming up should be Pepper Martin. Now, for Martin this afternoon, has been on base every time except the first time of that when he struck out. He has walked, singled, then saved in an area, had another single, stolen a base, scored three times. Watching for the ball, he sits out of Pepper Martin with one down in the first half of the ninth. Sardis takes his wind up, swings up easily, balances, here's the pitch. Pepper hits the ball right straight up in the air towards first base, it's being blown foul. Greenberg is after it and takes the ball over near the dugout for the out. Pepper Martin out on a ball to Greenberg. That puts two men down and brings to that Roth Rock, who has doubled twice this afternoon, walked once, knocked into a fourth out, and tried out once to left field. There are two out of the nine, then, with Roth Rock coming to bat. Here's the pitch. A ball. Inside and low to the left hand of that. Two out, nobody on. Jack Roth Rock up. Trotter has it again. Goes into that slow wind up and sets the pitch. And it's a ball. Ball two. Again, low and inside. Forcing Jack Roth Rock to do a little half skip with four feet to get out of the way. A slow wind up of the general again and the delivery. He offers that of a foul back into the screen. Two balls and strike one. There's the count now. That's that foul back into the screen. Two and one's the count on Jack Rothrock. Third batter up for the Cardinals here in the ninth. Scores 11 to nothing. Favor St. Louis in the first half of the ninth inning. General Crowder, who just come onto the mound for the Tigers, pitching to Jack Rothrock. Mitchell Jackson receiving. Here's the wind up and the pitch. A bunch. He goes winging down first. Crowder to get rolled over the line. Foul. Ray Hayworth, a great catcher who caught almost half of the Tigers' games this year, and his name appears in the lineup here for the first time. Here's the pitch. He swings hard, and Crowder strikes out the last batter for the Cardinals. They're in the ninth inning of this seventh ball game. Cardinals now start out to their position. As we go into the last half of the ninth inning, the Cardinals leading 11 to nothing with Charlie Geringer. Charlie Geringer, the second baseman for the Tigers, due at bat. Bill Delancey is down there now, waiting behind home plate for Jim Dean, who just did, uh, well, if almost a somersault going on out to the mound, just in high spirits. As he steps up there to the mound, he starts warming up with Bill Delancey. Crowder had a three up and three down in his appearance here in the last game, striking out Jack Ross, like the last man after running the count of three and two. Here's Charlie Geringer walks out there now, swinging the bat viciously through the air. Third man in the Tigers batting order. Up first here in the last half of the night, trailing by 11 runs. He stands there almost motionless, then wings his bat around viciously again. Here's Gordon with wind up. Here's the pitch. He offers at it, and it kicks the plate behind home a foul. Strike one. 
Delancey never fails to knock that masking cap off as anything doing behind home. He doesn't wait in St. Tells him as soon as that ball happens around him, he hasn't got his mitt to do something. Here's the pick. He swings at it and cracks a hit, a base hit, out into left field where Hank Fuller has it. She could end with a base hit. A single for Charlie Gerringer. First man up, Goose Goblin. A fill in New Jersey. Comes up and cracks the dust out of his heels. Dirt, as he comes up there, pulls the ticket, he stops. Ace is 15. Here's the wind up the pit. He cracks the bounder down to the zip call and shoots it down to the second. Screws and shoots it back. And Dean was over there for the play. Takes the throw from the Roger. So no problem with the play. Dave was standing about a yard off first base. From here, it looks as though Dizzy thought he had his foot on the back, but he's standing a whole four yard or four feet away from first, thinking you were taking a throw for the double play. The Rocher making the out at first, retiring Geringer on a fourth out, and then makes the throw over to first, trying to get the goose. Rather amusing, the crowd all got a laugh as Dizzy looked down his foot and discovered the bag wasn't under it. So here we have Bill Rogel up. Here's the pick. He cracked one hard, a pink hit, rolling on the ground out to right field. Bruce is on second, and Rogel is on first. One out, and two men on. Hank Greenberg, do it fast. Dazzle on second, Rogel on first. One out, and Hank Greenberg up. Hank's taking himself a terrific hole down here in the batter's box on the left side of home plate. He bats right, you know, and he's taking one for his right foot. As here throws the rubber, looks around at second, wind up, here's the pick, a strike ball. Tipping the outside corner to the right-handed batter. Right corner the count. One out and two on here in the last out of the ninth inning. Tigers failing by 11 runs. Stretch as he looks around at second. Here's the pitch. Foul off the handle of his bat. Foul. Two strikes. Ball tipping off the handle of his bat and bounding over towards the Cardinal dugout. Two strikes to count on... Big Hank Greenberg. Up here for his last time in this 1934 World Series with two men on and one out. And the count two strikes on him. Set, here's the pitch. A swinging strike going down for the strike out. And Big Hank, the first baseman from New York, for the strike tiger, takes a long, long walk over to the dugout. Delancey. Well, clear out almost the pitcher's now before he crosses the ball to Dizzy. Two men are gone, two out, and Dizzy is out there on the mound facing Marvin Owen. Marvin Owen, another California boy. Up here, with two men gone, two on, and the score 11 nothing save the St. Louis Chargers. Dizzy takes off his mound and clutches at his right sleeve. Takes off his glove, walks off the mound. Comes back up there again. Throws the rubber, goes to his set. Here's the pick. A drive down the deck which the Rocher takes. Cross it to face for the final out of the 1934 World Series. Which the Cardinals, which the St. Louis Cardinals win this seventh and deciding game with 11 runs, 70 hits, one error. The Tigers, no runs, six hits, and three errors. A shutout. Well, the great Dizzy Dean, he and his brother, the only pitchers during this 1934 World Series to have two games to their credit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we know that these players are racing off the field, and most of them got off before this crowd got out here. The crowd is racing over to the Tiger dugout, but the Tigers have all disappeared down the little hole in the far corner of their dugout, and the Cardinals, of course, raced over there and got specific to disappear. We want to describe the scene for you here, but the fans are walking very quietly across the green flag here in Nathan Field. 25 years since they've had a World Series, and they haven't won the World Championship. Their spirits are dampened, of course. We're going to pass you down to Tony Manning, who's in the Cardinal dugout. Come in, John Manning. Uh, now the boys are coming in. He's in here. And the first boy to story on the air is Captain Leo Galoster. Leo, what did you think of it? 
Well, my nerves are breaking. What a great ball player, the greatest fighting bunch of ball players I've ever had the pleasure of playing with. A great manager and two great picnic and beans and a great bunch of fellas. Who are you playing a great game out there? George of Silver, Fires, Fires of Out Number. And here is that right field of the Cardinals. The boy who blasts over in the right center field. Fires of Out Number and knocks off those hard flies. Jack Ross Rock. Hello, fans. First, I want to thank uh, the loyal leaders of California that sent me those telegrams. And it's a great feeling. We got a great nine, and we're all just as happy as we can be. Jack, get some of the other boys to Rip Collins. Here's Rip today. He has four hits. Come on in, Rip. Well, I wanted to get one more, but I got one more. I thought the world's brilliant. I hope my family's listening to me and Bob Chesson. I know my wife is. We can tell you we're all happy as we can be, Bob. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Susie Jean. Chris, just take this microphone and help yourself. Boy. Hello, everybody. Well, the Cardinals and the Kansas have predicted for the third started. The Cardinals would win the World's Lake and the World Championship, and they certainly did it. And I'm predicting we got out for myself, and boy, I got it. Look at this. This is the trial before you win the day. Win the good side. I have no alibi. Not at all. And I'll say, I can't say that much for the Tigers, because they come out and alibi just after their great defeat, the great association from the Cardinals. And if I'd have lost the ball game, and they had a big opportunity. Well, that's kind of nice to have the first. Congratulations, old fellow. You've worked hard. And it's mighty nice to have you here to make the first. Let's get over here and get a couple of marches. Hey, Pepper, Pepper Martin, come here a minute. Pepper Martin is trying to get himself a shower bath, but come on over. Hello, buddy. Hello, everybody. I sure am uh, glad that we brought the old center back to St. Louis. And it's just wonderful. I think everybody's so happy. Thanks, Chris. Here's Bill Delancey, that great young cat. You're going to hear a lot about Bill Delancey. How is it, Bill? I think it's a great season. We've got the two greatest pitchers in the world on our club. And here's another great pitcher. Come on in, check the office. It wasn't a great ball game this year. Oh, I want to say hello to my mother and father down in Texas. Also, my all my good friends down yours. I'm happy as I can be. Leo Delancey, I want to give you the pleasure of presenting uh, this next ball player. Well, radio fans, I want to present to you next. Oh, wait a minute, Leo. Let's prove this up, Leo. Really do a good job. Well, I'll tell you, it's very hard to say much about this young fella. He has got what you call it and everything that goes with it. He is one of the greatest young pitchers who has ever come up to the majors in the last 10 years. I'd like to present to you radio folks, Paul Dean, brother of Dizzy Dean, the man who won that ball game for us today. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, fans. I'm sure happy that we won the ball game in the World Series today, and I'm sure that we'll be out there by the next year, and I hope we can win again. Thanks. Come on, Leo. Present, present the boy that's great. I want to present the Cuban president, Mike Gonzalez. Hello, fine. A buddy hopper that we talked to on the wall. We fight the very much there. That's the one of the best series. One city out of four. We fight the more than anybody ever thought to the outside as everybody else. So goodbye. Thanks a lot. And here's the six bullets. No, that's the fire. We're going to get the fuzzy wires for first. Come on, fuzzy. Hello, everybody. We're all excited here and we're very happy. We won this world championship. It shows the fighting spirit. I want to say a word about Frankie Frake. He's got the fighting spirit and he's fired all the players with a great spirit and the assured of him. And the Dean boys also. The short great job, see? All right. Hello, everybody, and Hampers, and Mother, and Dad, and everybody. Goodbye, we're all excited here. We wish you all lots of luck to have to give. Oh, man, alive. I want to tell you that this is quickly something. Jack Rolf, what do you think of it? Isn't this pleasant? Oh, uh, this, this is, uh, what a funny thing like it. Right, boy, this is a real fight in ball club, and they're still fighting. They'll go out and fight. These kids are certainly the happiest day. We're trying to elbow our way over here to Frankie Fish. Hundreds of photographers are here. And Don Wilson, using all of his feet, trying to get through. We're trying to get over to Frankie Fish so that Frankie can tell you how uh, it is to be the manager of a world championship team. He's sitting here now with everybody popping away. It's kind of hard to get in there, but we're going to get in to Frankie Fish just as soon as we can. Frankie, I'm in here now with one arm around him and somebody's talking to him. I'm going to take... Ladies and gentlemen, the manager of the World Champion St. Louis Cardinals, Frankie Fisher. Hello, everybody. I'm pretty well tired out. And uh, John, John's just tickled his ass about this thing. And the boys deserve all the credit. I don't want to go on to them, but they fought and fought. They never gave up. They're great bunch of kids. It was a wonderful victory, a great series, a hard-fought series, and the hardest one I've ever been in. 
And we played against the great ball club. They gave us a battle all down the stretch and a world of credit to Mickey Cobb and everyone on the ball club. Thank you. Thank you, Frankie Fish, and on behalf of the thousands and thousands of listeners, we want to take their part for a moment and say congratulations to you and to all of your boys. I'm going to turn this microphone over to Don Wilson for a moment so that we can get some of the other boys. Well, pandemonium is certainly broken loose here in the dressing room of the St. Louis Cardinals here after this game. We were in hopes of getting Joe Medwick on here a few minutes ago, but I believe he's left the dressing room. Joe? We're trying to find Sonny Arzati. Here he is. Sonny Arzati, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's too, too happy to see an awful lot, but we've been a great ball club, and I've never been in a ball club that's had the fighting spirit that this side in the last side has. We're going to walk through here now, and we'll have some of the Detroit boys on the air for you just in a few seconds. We're going across over into the Tiger dugout, and a lot of you folks are listening in. Got to hear the Tiger players and first go walk. It was tough luck to me, folks, but I hope we just had to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to present to you the next two thousand. We gave them all we had, folks, so now we'll give them the credit. That's fine. Mickey Coffin, the manager of the Tigers, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Jack Lake, the Thunder of Travel, and Frankie Stokes, and a great player. He is just too tough person. Well, we get beaten next time. Billy Rochelle, Bill, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Rochelle, the shortstop of the Detroit Pike. Well, uh, the early night in St. Paul's was busy, had plenty. And uh, he deserves all the credit in the world. <laughs> well, I think that that's just about all over in the Tiger dugout, of course. The situation here, the boys are a bit downcast, as you know. They were just the the St. Louis Cardinals of the National League, and today the full series at Navin Field is over. The boys have given their all in this great uh, classic this year. Uh, here at Navin Field, the series finishes this afternoon, and the St. Louis Cardinals, of course, are the National League champions. This is Tom Manning speaking, and I'm sure you have had a pleasure in bringing you the World Series, along with Joe McNamee, Fort Bond, and our John Wilson. Bob, do you have a word to say? Well, I have a great deal to say. I think that it's been our pleasure to hear from these very fine players. It's been grand to see this last game in this 1934 series. This concludes the broadcast of the World Series game, sponsored by the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, Mr. Edsel Ford, and your local Ford dealer. The sponsors will be amply repaid if you have enjoyed these broadcasts. Today's game writes the final chapter of the 1934 baseball season. The Ford Motor Company salutes the victors the St. Louis Cardinals, world champion for 1934, and wishes both teams good luck in the pennant race next year. And in the meantime, watch the Fords go by. During this series, it has been the pleasure of a group of NBC announcers to present these games. Jim McInerney with the three game victors. Hey, Don Wilson did that job in his competent manner. Tom Manning and myself at the farm of giving you the play by play. This is Fort Bond signing off this game, which has come to you through the facilities of the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>